Welcome to Stigler for the details. My name is Alan Dickerson, known in some wargaming circles as Stigler, and I'm going to be uh, refreshing my tutorial on Vassal. And I guess I've got to start off with the big question, why Vassal? Um, I find it distressing the number of times that I have to have this debate or explanation online um, to explain why anyone would want to play uh, war games via Vassal. And this is extremely vexing in light of the high percentage of gamers who toil away playing solitaire only. And while I do see some benefit to solitaire specific designs and also for, you know, using war games as a uh, accompaniment to a good book or a history on a campaign or a battle or uh, playing by oneself to learn the rules in preparation for a match. Um, I, I just can't get away from, from what I think is the fact that game, most games, most war games are made to be played either competitively or in teams or even cooperatively, but it is a, it is a group effort. And also, um, the wargaming community has shown itself to be very, very broad, wide, and also very generous and, you know, full of really great characters and different people. And they meet online to talk about gaming and to talk about all kinds of different things. So it's always seemed odd to me that the same people that uh, like to meet online and talk about gaming or talk about what they want to buy or talk about all these different issues or counter clipping or any of these things go and retreat to their little abode and settle for only playing games themselves. Um, so Vassal, to put it simply, is a way that you can play uh, a game with another person or persons virtually, whether that be uh, together on a server or whether it be by exchanging um, log files of moves um, in a more current version of what used to be play by mail. So now today it's play by email because you can easily uh, swap log files uh, using email. So Vassal, it, uh, it makes your potential opponent pool worldwide. Because anyone that has a Vassal module can play anybody else, no matter where they are, what time it is. Anytime you can either arrange uh, to, to meet online, or if you just prefer to uh, trade log files, you can play anyone, anytime in the world at, you know, and pretty much any game because Vassal supports uh, many, many more war games than it doesn't support. I'll put it that way. Uh, so there, there's one benefit, is the exposure to opponents that Vassal gives you. The second thing is that Vassal solves vast, the vast majority of the real-life issues that have always plagued wargamers and will continue to plague wargamers, that being one... Uh, 
the time that it takes to set up and play a war game, the amount of time that a war game has to sit on a table or somewhere while players uh, attempt to play a game that can't be played in one sitting. So there's space, there's leave up time, there's setup time. Vassal can alleviate a lot of those problems as well. Um, when you're playing a Vassal game, you don't have to worry about uh, cats jumping on the map. You don't have to worry about uh, significant others um, upsetting or bumping into the table and scattering your pieces all over. You don't have to worry about uh, the fact that Maybe your favorite game simply has a map that is too big to put on any table that you own or have access to. Um, and also the proximity issue. There are a number of gamers who live somewhat close to another gamer who has a similar uh, set of interests and in games they want to play, but you know they, they live on opposite sides of the same state. Um, so they can't really schedule time to get together because, you know, one of them's retired, the other one works, all these different issues. Vassal solves all of that because each player can play from his or her computer at any time. They can arrange a time to, you know, to, to meet online and use, uh, telephony like Skype or Discord, those are the, some of the popular telephony, uh, to meet online and play a game. So Vassal solves all of those issues with a single system that is uh, small, doesn't have much imprint as far as file sizes go, um, doesn't require a... a high-powered computer to run it. The list just goes on and on. And so I just, I can't see any reason why anyone would not want to use Vassal to facilitate the playing of any game that they want, just about. And also, you know, to be able to play more often with more people it's just a win, 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 win type situation. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox on that and consider that you are probably a convert to at least the idea of Vassal. But you may have heard some things or not really understand really what Vassal is, and you're thinking that you have to, quote unquote, learn Vassal as if it's some new uh, system or set of rules like, say, learning uh, advanced squad leader, which is one of those uh, lifestyle systems that some people are really, really into and other people, you know, are, are afraid to even approach just because they've heard about the size, the complexity, the cost, all those sort of things. People apply that to Vassal, and they think that they have to learn Vassal in order to, to uh, use it. And I always try to explain that Vassal is not a system or a game unto itself. Rather, it is merely a facilitator. It allows you to play uh, games virtually. So there isn't that much to learn. And in fact, the, the main purpose of this uh, video is to demystify the whole process of downloading Vassal, getting it on your computer, uh, amassing a library of modules for the games that you want to play, and finally how to uh, play a game on Vassal with the two most popular methods, one being uh, on the server together with another player or players, or 
uh, play by email and exchanging log files. So let's get down to it. Once you've made the decision that you want to kind of change your entire uh, gaming outlook, then you'll want to download that. So I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is. Uh, on the screen here, you can see this is the Vassal uh, website, and you can find it by going to this address, www.vassalengine.org. And that'll take you here. And since they have recently uh, overhauled their entire website, the first thing you see, uh, along with this nice little graphic of uh, the interface, is a big old button here that says Get Vassal. So there's your first problem solved. How do, how do, you, how do you access this? So you click the button, and you're taken to a page with the most current version, which is 362. And you get some information that you really don't need about what the changes are because Vassal is under continuous development. You'll come to a list here that shows all of the various versions for the systems that you might want to use. The most uh, frequently use would be this version here, the Windows x86 64-bit version. So if you've got a Windows machine that is running uh, anything north of Windows 8 or Windows 7, certainly, you probably have a 64-bit system. So you would want this one. If you have a really, really old system, you might want to use the 32-bit system. There are some Mac OS systems here. There's Linux. All of these things are all here, but this is the one 64-bit Windows that will uh, serve most people. So you click that link. It will download here. And it's only about 60 megabytes currently. So it'll take uh, less than a minute probably to download if you've got decent uh, web internet. And voila, it's there. And we'll do a show and folder. This pops up in my download version here. And then what I usually do is cut it and put it in my installers folder. I have an installer folder, paste, okay, and I'll, I'll paste it here. Now I'm going to show you how to install this, but keep in mind I've already done it, so it might look a little bit different to you, but I'm going to see if I can get through it without uh, forcing myself to overwrite my own version. Now, um, a word about version control. As, as I said earlier, Vassal is constantly being upgraded. So by the time that you download a version of, um, of uh, Vassal, there might be another version that is announced being available, or there may be a program going on where they're ramping up for the next uh the next version and they're putting versions out there uh, that people can kind of try work all the bugs out and so when they're doing that you know there'll be a 3.62 available one day the next by the end of the week it'll there will be a 363 beta then 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 there'll be a 364 beta etc cetera, etc cetera. and if you want to kind of keep up on it you know you can download everything as it appears. And 
when you're going through a period like that, you'll probably want to keep the latest non-beta version on your machine along with an additional copy that has whatever beta that you might be running. So I'm going to show you how to install this so that you can uh, support multiple Vassal versions. So here we go. You pick your installer, double click it, and up pops this window here. And you click Next. Now, when you first install Vassal, you can use the standard version, and this will be fine. After your initial install of version of uh, Vassal, I'm sorry, after your initial install of Vassal or whenever you are managing uh, multiple versions, you want to have a beta version, you want to have a clean, most recent version, you'll use custom. Okay. After, if you select uh, custom, then you go next. It'll give you a destination folder. You can put it in program files. That'll be fine. Or you can put it anywhere else that you want. And more on that later. You go to next. It'll ask you if you want to put icons on your desktop or not. Then you hit next. There. Okay. Now says that it is ready to install, but it has not asked me if I want to overwrite any version that is already on the machine or not. So I'm going to back up next, and I'm going to choose custom. Okay, next, next. Oh. Oh, it's not showing me the custom installer, probably because it's already installed. So, hmm, okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and install it. And, well, hang on. Let me go back one more time and try this again. Options, custom, yeah, next. Okay, next. Next. Hmm. Say. Like, okay. Well, let's see what it does. It's probably just going to overwrite my last version, which should be fine. Click next. And wow. Okay. What I meant to show you was there should be a window that pops up that gives you a list of Vassal modules that you have already installed, and then you can choose which ones to keep and which ones to throw out or overwrite with the current version. That's what I hope to show you, but it's not cooperating right now. Anyway, we have successfully uh, installed it. You have the run Vassal there, so when you finish, it's going to launch it. And then up it'll pop a window. And this one pops up a window with a whole lot of modules already listed in it because I've got a lot of modules. If you're installing this for the first time, it will this, uh, this whole space here will be blank. And what you'll want to do is then, let me move this out of the way, is you'll want to Go back here and download modules. So right up here at the top right, you click that to go to the modules section. And here, starting with an alphabetical and numerical list, you can simply click um, the name of the module that you want. Let's, uh, I don't know, what should we pick? 
Um, let's see. What's a good popular system? Oh, Napoleon's Last Battles. Let's say click N here, and you'll find Napoleon's Last Battles. Among thousands of other titles, this will pop open. You'll find your list of modules here. If there are multiple versions, you should probably choose the most recent one. Some will have uh, different reasons for having multiple versions. And the fact is that people can create multiple versions of the same game because they have different feature sets or there's something different about them. They can all coexist. But when you're playing with another person, you have to have the, the exact same module that you're playing together on the server or if you're exchanging log files. So that's really the only mitigating factor is to make sure that you have the same version as any prospective opponent. Uh, you can also download multiple versions of a module and have both of them so that, you know, when you go to play with someone else, if they have a, uh, a copy of a different version, as long as you use the same one, you will... Um, you'll be able to play the same game. Now, all you do is click that, and it will download your module here. Then you can store it wherever you want. Now, the one caveat that I will stress is that you should not store your Vassal modules here in or actually it will be in here in your program files where vassal is stored this is the root for your installation so it's your c drive program files vassal 3.62 or whatever the version number is this is where vassal lives you should not place your modules in here there are some issues that that might cause. And so what I do is I keep my version of Vassal here in program files. And for everything else, I have a completely different, very large Wargaming folder in which I have a folder for each game title that I'm interested in. And somewhere in there, that's where I... Uh, store my Vassal modules. I also have a Vassal projects uh, folder for all of the module creation projects that I work on. And so I, I keep it organized that way. You can do it any way you want. The only thing is do not store your modules, your um, log files, anything to do with Vassal, don't store it in the root folder that the application itself is stored in. That's the only caveat. All right. Now, after you have uh, downloaded at least one module, then when you launch uh, Vassal here and you're here, you can simply open a module under the file menu, file, open module, and then you simply uh, navigate to wherever you want, wherever you have um, stored a module. So let's say I want to play, uh, I don't know, Napoleon's Last Battles. Let's see if I have that. Yes. Okay, so you can see I've already stored a bunch of those modules that were on that page here. So you double-click that, and then thereafter it will appear in this window after you have um, 
opened it up for the first time. Then after that, you can simply come here and uh, let's see, I haven't used it in a while. So let me let me actually do that. Open module. Um, Napoleon's last battles. Where is it? The twelve five version. Double click that, and there'll be a brief delay while it processes all the image tiles. And then it should launch. Now notice also back here, this is the 12.5 module version here, and it will be in the list of Vassal modules thereafter. From that point, then you can simply right-click it and open module, so you don't have to go through this again. All right. Once you get to this page, you're, um, you're asked whether you want to start a new game offline, look for a game online, or load a saved game. Now, the distinction there is if you, you know, just want to poke around or if you want to play solitaire, you can start a new game offline. If you are meeting someone online, you can click that and then it will uh, open your pathway to the game server. Or if you're continuing a game that you have stored a game state for, and I will explain all that uh, as we go, you can load a saved game. Let's first start with start a new game offline. You're given an opportunity to enter a password. And this is a password that you will use to enter a game with other players that might continue on. And that locks anybody else out of the side that you have chosen. Uh, let's see if we can bypass that for now. Let's cancel that. OK. Then you have this interface here, which is just basically, it just tells you that you opened up the module. And from that point, you can hmm, join the game as an observer or set a password. Uh, let's, let's pick solo for now. Finish. OK. You're asked if you want to start a new log file. We'll get into the reasons why you would want to usually select yes, but we'll say no for now. And as you can see, if you're familiar at all with Napoleon's Last Battle, we have a scan map here that is a 100% reproduction of the actual map. And even better, if you're familiar with Napoleon's Last Battle, you know that these are actually four small folio games stitched together. And if you own a copy of this, you'll know that each of them has the uh, putty colored border around it. And you actually have to slice the edges off of the maps that abut other maps and cobble together uh, the map to play if you're going to play the campaign game. Well, that's not necessary in Napoleon's Last Battle's Vassal module because all four maps have been stitched together for you. So you could play any of the four. Uh, Ligny here, Caterbra, moving up here, uh, La Belle Alliance, or the Battle of Waterloo, or Vavre. And you can um, drag the units onto the map and play any one of the four, or you can play the campaign game. It's your choice. You can do whatever you want. Now, the way Vassal works is that the module, depending on how well it was designed, uh, should support the play 
of the module for support the play of the game. So if you're familiar with the rules, you should be able to intuitively figure out what is necessary to be able to play. Now, this one we already see is not set up for you. None of the pieces are on the map, which I think is a bit of a problem, but it's not an insurmountable one. Here, you can open the pieces menu, slide this over, and you'll see that there are tabs for all the French units, all the allied units, all of these are all the leaders. All of these are here. And then all you have to do to uh, start to play one of these is you'll notice the map. If we zoom in, we see that there are little prompts to set up where these units start the game. So let's zoom in a little bit more. We have this unit here, which is Soye, a 6-4 infantry unit. And if we can find um, Soye, a 6-4 infantry unit in the second core, uh, where is it? I have a feeling this is not nearly all of the French units, or it shouldn't be. Uh, Michelle, 6-4 Infantry. Oh, no, this is 6-4 Artillery. And what was the name of that unit? Um, Pelave, 6-4 Artillery. 6-4 Artillery, where are those units? Hmm. I can't seem to find it here. Well, the organization in here leaves a little something to be desired. But anyway, you can drag the pieces onto the map one by one, and provided they work here, drag them onto the map and quickly set the game up. This should actually have been done for you, but, well, I didn't design this Vassal module. This might be a project that another player might want to undertake. And they could also fix things like this uh, move banner should actually be on the side of the counter, but I digress. So after you move them on, then you, as you can see, you can click and drag units to move them on the map just like you would by picking them up on a physical game. If you are ready to conduct combat, there's a die here. So let's close the pieces. Then you roll that, and it reports the result in here, which is a 5. You have a charts table here where you can see, depending on whatever your odds are, you can find what five means and apply that on the map. It all works intuitively. So uh, different games will have uh, different menus that might have tables in them or different functions. Some of them uh, may be automated on the counters by right-clicking them, and you will see if this unit is eliminated, you can send it to the elimination pool by just clicking this, and then here's the elimination display. Voila, it will pop up there. Okay, so that's, basic, that's basically how, uh, how Vassal works, um, whether you're online or whether you're uh, playing via play by email in which you are um, trading log files. Let me bring that back up. All right. Now, let me explain uh, first about recording log files. And we're going to start with a discussion of the difference between vSave game states and vlog log files. Okay. A game state is 
simply a snapshot in time of where the game is, where all the pieces are, et cetera, at any one time. So if this map were full of, of uh, counters and you're on game turn six and it's time to quit, you'll want to save a game state so that the next time you'll have a easy to find file that you can click when you open this you'll open a game state file instead and then you'll open a file with all the pieces in place ready to go for game turn 6 so once you get to that point at the end of a session you will save save the game or save the game as save the game as would be used if you have uh, save the game previously. So you click save the game as, and let's see, you could go to wherever you want to save it. We'll call it Napoleon's Last Battles, and we will create a new folder, and we'll call that um, versus say you're playing me and now you can give it game turn six do a save you can enter any comments such as uh, about to begin gt6 there now you save the game now if you want to open this again all you would really have to do is get into your file menu, find that folder versus Stiegler somewhere in your on your system, and just double click the Vassal module for that, and then this would pop up without having to, to do anything else. So that's a game state. Now, what you would not get in that game state file is any of the moves that happened in game turns one through five. To get that, you have to record a log file. To record a log file, and you'll also remember when we opened this up, the first thing you saw was a little square here that said, do you want to begin a log file? Usually you want to say yes, because that starts recording a log file from the minute you click it. But if you forget it or you don't want to record extraneous stuff like dragging all the counters onto the map to, to do setup, once you get everything set up, you can go to the file menu and begin log file. Now, you'll also notice that end log file is grayed out because you haven't begun a log file. Once you begin the log file, that'll reverse, and end log file will be the only choice. So you begin the log file, and you call it, let's call it game turn six through, you don't know how far you're going to get, but you could later change the name of the uh, file before you send it to your opponent. You can enter file comments again. And now you can see here in the text buffer, it says logging has begun. This will now um, record every move that you make, every die roll you make. Uh, if there are any explanations that you want to make for your opponent, such as, you know, uh, showing him exactly what units are going to be, you know, attacking anybody else. You could enter them here. Okay, so let's let's uh, build something here. We'll just do this. Drag three random units for the French on. Then we'll go to the Allies and we'll drag on a unit here and a unit there and. Then we'll stow our pieces menu. All right. Now let's say it's the French game turn six. And so he moves one, two, 
three, four, and then moves one, two, and then he moves here. He's going to do a soak off. Okay, and that's the end of the turn, and now it's time to resolve combat. Now, you'll notice that all of this has been reported here. All the moves tells you where they moved. Uh, this game doesn't appear to have movement trails. Some games will actually draw like a little line so that you can retrace your moves. Also notice that there is a undo last move button so that if you make a mistake and want to uh, retrace your moves, you can do it one move at a time. Okay. Now, let's say you want to do a combat here. So you could mark the fact that uh, French movement completed. Now, keeping in mind, we're typing this in because we're going to send this to our opponent, and then he's going to replay this a move at a time, and he'll be watching what you do as the French player. So that's why we're putting these in here, to let them know kind of what's going on. Sometimes it'll be obvious, sometimes not. All right, so now, now it's time to do a combat phase. So let's type that in. And then we'll say we want to um, do this one here because we think we'll, at 9 to 1, we'll be able to destroy this cavalry unit. So let's say I can record things like... Um, there's a feature where if you hold the Alt button and click, you get this little thing here. We're going to say these two units are attacking those two units. So you can record those. And then you can, uh, let's zoom in here. We could log in. Um, and go and... Tromelin versus and difficult names there. And you'll just say that it is nine to one. Okay. So you declare your odds. You, you declare who is attacking whom here. And you have nine to one. And then you roll the die and you get a five. That's the second five in a row we've rolled. And then we can open up the charts here and we see six to one with a five is an exchange. Okay. So that's going to be really expensive. So what will happen there is he will be eliminated and then uh, at least one unit of the same value for the attacker has to be eliminated, and we'll send that there, and he can advance into the hex, and voila. Then we can declare this one, which is a two-to-one. So Hulo versus Dornberg, two-to-one. And then we can roll the die again, and we get a six this time. And we can open the uh, chart. Two to one, six is AR or attacker retreat. And then we will retreat him into the Bois de Basu. He will not advance. Okay. So we've got that. Now let's say that's the end of the turn. Uh, then we can end the log file. As you can see, you can't begin a log file. It's grayed out because you already have begun a log file. Click end file. Log file is written. Okay. Now, let us um, close the game. And now, let us assume that you mail this, email this to your opponent. And they are the allied player. And then what they will do is they will... Um, Napoleon's Last Battles. Where is it? Napoleon's Last Battles. They will get this V-log file, 
And as you can see that it's got a different suffix than this. This V save, that's the blank uh, game state that we started. This is the log we just did. So your opponent will double click this. And they then they will step forward through the entire log file. So when we start to click this, it'll go move by move. So it'll start probably by placing all those units on the map that I placed. And then it'll start going move by move. And so he can see this. Also, if he makes, if he detects, say, an error, say he couldn't move to that hex, he could, if he wants, start a new log file that will overwrite this if he needs to. Okay, let's keep going. We do the moves, and then he will see that you undid some things and then moved up. So everything that we recorded earlier is recorded for your opponent to see. And all he has to do is click the step forward button or the undo if he wants to go backwards to go through the file. So then here's your note that you left, French movement completed. Then it's the combat phase. So all these notes are in there. So now we go through and he said, oh, okay, he's attacking me there. There's the note, there's the die roll, same die roll that we got, and he can see, oh, that's an exchange, he loves it. So he knows what goes on there, etc. Okay, so once you get all the way to the end of it, it'll say end of log file, start a new log file, and you would say yes. Okay, and then you would say um, GT6 allied turn in our comment if you need to and now it's your turn now you're creating a new log file where this guy starts to get out of dodge etc cetera, etc cetera. and now you're the one creating the log file until you want to stop and then you end the log file and you would then send that back to me so this is how you uh, create log files. Now, any time that you want to create that snapshot, that point in time, you would not save the log file. You would save the game as. And that would create a V save or game state file. It's important to fully understand the distinction between a log file and a game state file. Hope I've made that clear. All right. That's one method of play for Vassal. The other method is to play with someone um, together online at the same time. When you want to go do that, you open the server controls button right here and then you get this little menu and this process has now been improved um, and that's one of the reasons why i'm filming this is that i had to explain something that used to go wrong and now they've kind of fixed it at least with some notes so what you'll want to do is hit the connect button this will connect you to the server. Or if you're basically trying to find a pickup game and find somebody who might be lurking online, you could click to open the server. Right click. Click the Vassal server. And where is it? Check messages, post messages, ah, display server there. This will open the Vassal server, 
and will show you a list of all the games that are being played online on the server at any one time. So you can look through here and see if you find Napoleon's Last Battles, which you don't. So for now, you're out of luck. If you wanted to join one of these other games, as long as you have the uh, module, the same module version as any of these uh, other games, you could say go in here and find a game and join it. But normally what happens is you arrange either online on a Facebook page or on Consim World or somehow other, you arrange a time and a date to meet online and you'll follow this procedure to do that. You've got your game, you've already decided what you're gonna play and you come online and you click connect all right, and now you get these great notes that I'm about to kind of explain to you. You pop on and you see active game rooms, and these are active game rooms for the module you have chosen. So if you choose a game that no one is playing at that time, this is what you'll see. If you choose a game where you launch from a module that does have someone online at the current time, their games will pop up in this list. Now, when you get into the Vassal server, you'll land here in the main room. And as these notes explain to you, this is really just a meeting spot for you to be able to, you know, pick sides, chat or whatever using the text buffer type messages here, and anybody else who's in the room will be able to see these messages. That's all you can do here. If you want to actually start play, you could wait here for your opponent, or you don't have to. You need to start a new room, and that will actually be a room where two or more people can meet and play, share the same screen. So we'll call it, uh, let's say we wanted to do Mabel Alliance, or you can give it any other name. You create that. And as you can see, we have a new game created under the main room. This is fully functional. So I'm the only person who is in here. Once my opponent shows up, they will pop up and they will, they will uh, be in the main room. And then they will see that I've already got the game set up and ready to go. They can right-click it, and then they will have join the room as an option. I don't have that option because I'm already in the room. You can also see there's an option to lock the room if you don't want people popping in to, you know, to uh, watch or maybe there's somebody who's being disruptive or something like that and making snarky comments. You can lock the room once every... Once uh, your opponent arrives, you can do that. So your opponent would simply right click and join the room. Then they would appear here in the current game room. From that point on, the two of you should see the same map. And whenever your opponent makes a move, you'll see it happen on the map too, the same as they will. They will see the same messages in the text buffer. All of that should um, occur in real time. Sometimes, though, if you lose connection or the internet gets squirrely, you know you'll get to a point where um, you know you, you'll announce a move, and your opponent will say, "Wait, I didn't see you do that," and then it'll quickly become apparent that you've lost synchronization. If that happens the person who has lost connection to the other can simply right click their opponent and then synchronize will be an option. So you can synchronize with another player by simply clicking that and then everything should be right with the world again. Also, you can see there are uh, 
private message things. If you've got multiple people and you want to send them a message that is not going to appear in the text buffer and spoil your surprise, you can do that. You can send a wake up if you know that they've you know gone for a, a break or something like that, and you know you, you need to send them a message that says, "Hey, you know, we notice uh, you know you're not participating." You can do that too. Now, keep in mind that. The text buffer is not in any way ideal as a way of communicating. You should be using some form of internet telephony to uh, speak with your opponent. The ones that I would recommend would be right here at the bottom here, Skype. Or if you don't have Skype, another popular... Um, method is, I'll pull it over here, Discord. This is something that kind of works like the Vassal server in that, you know, you open it up, you see a bunch of channels that you can join. You can join uh, groups of friends and things like that. And you can, uh, if you have a team game, you can set up rooms so that, you know, the allied team can go to a room and have uh, discussions amongst themselves and then return to the common uh, room where everybody plays together. All those sort of things uh, can happen. Or with Skype, uh, you, can, you can get multiple people on a Skype call as well, although I don't think you have as many options as you would have with Discord. But at any rate, no matter what it is that you choose, you should use some form of internet telephony when you're playing together on the net so that you can talk, much like you're listening to my voice rather than having to type everything you're doing into the text buffer. That should only be resolved or reserved for play-by-email matches so that you know you can under uh, players can understand what's going on and what's been being recorded. So those are the two methods for uh, using Vassal online and also offline. Different modules will be built different ways, and they should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you understand the rules of the game and the module is... Um, set up well, it should be pretty easy to figure out how to set up and begin play. Um, Vassal does not enforce any rules for you, but then again, neither does a physical game. If we're actually playing this on a physical map, yes, I can pick up this counter and I can move it all the way across the map and plop it down. Nothing's stopping me from doing that. But, of course, the rules say that there are movement allowances and you have to count them off. So, you know, your opponent would say, hey, you can't move all the way down there. And so, you know, people should not expect Vassal to apply the rules for them. You do the same thing that you would do on a physical map is you would move, you know, one hex at a time like that. Or if it were really obvious that you can you know, move a great distance. You can just kind of pick it up and drop it down there. If, you know, say movement is a half through that, you can count 14 hexes and drop it there, however you want to play. But this has been an introduction to Vassal so that you understand just how easy it is to get started with this. And, you know, once you start to reach out to others, play games either uh, through email or uh, I call it face to net by using the server to play cooperatively or together uh, online. Once you start doing that, I don't know any reason why you'd want to play games solo unless it's, you know, to learn the rules or to, you know, investigate a strategy that you'll use in your next match, something like that. 
But, you know, Vassal is a great way to enjoy the camaraderie of the war game community, play games amongst ourselves at any time that is convenient uh, for everyone involved. It's, it is just a way that should revolutionize or change forever the way you approach war gaming. Okay, so we're right at about an hour, so I'm going to wrap this up. I've been Stiegler at Stiegler for the details, and I hope to see you online and playing games via Vassal very, very soon. Bye now.